Welcome to part five of Kinetics Review. This video will focus on reviewing videos two, three, and four, which gave a detailed review to first, second, and zero order integrated rate laws. Before we begin, it is worth mentioning that the student should have first viewed videos one through four of this review to gain more from this and subsequent sections. In previous videos, we limited our conversation to zero first and second order reactions. And as the rate laws demonstrate, examined reactions with only one reactant for zero first and second order reactions. Otherwise, pseudo order techniques need to be introduced and they will not be discussed here. The instantaneous rate of reaction, dA over dt, which we can equate to the rate law, allowed us to derive three differential equations with a little calculus and produce a function, which is the concentration as a function of time. Looking closer at these equations, we see they are all linear equations, where a plot of time on the x-axis versus either concentration of A, natural log of A, or 1 over the concentration of A on the y-axis will give a straight line. So, given some concentration time data, let's try to linearize this data. First, we will try by plotting the concentration of A versus time to see if the reaction follows zero-order kinetics. Because the plot is not linear, we can determine that the reaction does not follow zero-order kinetics. Next, let's convert the concentration of A data to natural log of the concentration of A and see if natural log of the concentration of A versus time yields a straight line plot. This plot also proves that the reaction does not follow first order kinetics because the plot is not linear. Next, if we take the reciprocal of the concentrations and plot one over the concentrations versus time, we should generate a straight line if the reaction follows second order kinetics, which it does. Alternatively, one could calculate the slopes of the first two and last two data points. If the two slopes are not equal, then it is not a linear plot, which is much quicker to accomplish. This easier method eliminates zero and first order kinetics for this reaction. However, if the slopes do match, this is the definition of a straight line. Thus, the plot is considered to be linear, which proves the reaction follows second order kinetics for this example. Also covered in the previous three videos in detail was the derivation and employment of the half-life equations. Interestingly, in zero and second order kinetics, there was a concentration dependency, which caused subsequent half-lives to change. In contrast, within first order kinetics, the half-lives remained constant because there is no concentration dependency. Again, these concepts, as well as example exercises, are examined within the previous videos of this series. So let's work several exercises that demonstrate these principles. Here we are given concentration time data for the dimerization of 1,3-butadiene, and as for the concentration of reactant remaining after a certain amount of time. It is first worth our efforts to understand the dimerization reaction, which is simply two molecules of 1,3-butadiene reacting in a pericyclic manner to afford the cyclic compound shown via a diels alda reaction. So the plan is to first deduce the order of the reaction by linearizing the concentration time data. In other words, which equation will afford a linear plot? The concentration of A? natural log of the concentrations of A, or 1 over the concentrations of A versus time. Next, the slope will allow us to deduce the rate constant. At this point, three of the four variables will be known, regardless of which order the reaction follows. The initial concentration was given, the rate constant will have been deduced from the slope, and the time will be equal to 6800 seconds. Thus, the remaining concentration of 1,3-butadiene can be easily calculated. So let's first check to see if the reaction follows zero-order kinetics by plotting concentrations of A versus time. Clearly, the reaction does not follow zero-order kinetics because the data does not yield a straight-line plot. 
Alternatively, we could check to see if slopes of the first two and last two data points match, which is the definition of a straight line. The two slope calculations do not match, thus zero-order kinetics can be eliminated. So now, let's check if the reaction follows first-order kinetics by plotting the natural logs of the concentrations of A versus time, which will require the natural logs of all the concentrations. The data is not linear, thus first-order kinetics can be eliminated. Alternatively, and much quicker, we could check to see if the slopes of the first two and last two data points match, which again is the definition of a straight line. The two slope calculations do not match, thus first-order kinetics can be eliminated. So now, let's check if the reaction follows second-order kinetics by plotting one over the concentrations of A versus time, which will require the reciprocals of all the concentrations. The data produces a straight line, thus this reaction appears to follow second-order kinetics. Alternatively, and the recommended much quicker method to solve this problem, is to calculate if the slopes of the first two and last two data points match, which again is the definition of a straight line. The two slope calculations are close enough to be considered a match, thus this reaction follows second-order kinetics. We have now completed the first step of our proposed plan, which was to linearize the given data, which allows one to deduce that the reaction follows second-order kinetics. Now to calculate the rate constant, we will need the first and last data points to calculate the slope. Now substitute the rate constant, the time, 6800 seconds, and the initial concentration into the integrated second-order rate law to calculate the concentration of reactant at 6800 seconds. So in summary, we took the concentration time data and found under which conditions the data is linear, which was 1 over the concentrations of 1,3-butadiene versus time. But we also needed the rate constant, which was calculated by simply calculating the slope of the linearized data. With three of the four variables in hand, the concentration of 1,3-butadiene at 6,800 seconds was obtained. Another type of question the student should be prepared to answer is pertaining to the half-life of a reaction. We have previously determined that the dimerization reaction follows second-order kinetics, and we have already calculated the rate constant. In a previous video, we have derived the second-order half-life equation, shown here. We noted that by definition, the concentration of reactant will be cut in half for each half-life. In addition, we observed that the half-life for a second-order reaction has a concentration dependency that will cause each successive half-life to double, which makes sense when we invoke basic collision theory. After each half-life, there is half the reactants. Thus, the reactants have a harder time finding each other for successful collisions, and this will double the time for each half-life. Substituting the rate constant and the initial concentration affords the first half-life. Calculating the second half-life means we have to use half the initial concentration, which affords a half-life that is twice the first. Calculating the third half-life means the concentration is again cut in half, causing the third half-life to be twice the second half-life. Another type of question the student should be prepared to answer could be, uh, how much time needs to pass for a reaction to be X percent complete given some time and concentration data? First, the student will still have to linearize the time concentration data to deduce the kinetics of the reaction to employ the correct integrated rate law equation and calculate the rate constant, which have already previously been accomplished to tackle this type of question. For example, how much time needs to pass for the reaction to be 86% complete? The key here is to recognize that if the reaction is X% percent complete, then 100 minus X% percent remains, which is 
Thus, if the initial concentration was 0 0.0100 molar, then when the reaction is 86% complete, 14% remains, which is 0 0.0014 molar. At this point, we know the initial concentration, which was given within the problem. We have calculated that the concentration will be 0 0.0014 molar when the reaction is 86% complete, and we have previously calculated the rate constant. Therefore, with three of the four variables known, we can easily calculate the time required for the reaction to be 86% complete by substituting these values into the integrated second order rate equation, which affords our answer of 11,500 seconds. Before proceeding to the next video, it is highly recommended that the student watch or even rewatch videos 1 through 4 of this kinetics review to better understand how to deduce the rate law for a reaction. After all, it will become imperative for the student to first deduce the rate law so that a mechanism may be hypothesized, which is covered in the next section of this video series on kinetics.